everybody, it's Irene with Brainstorm Makers. And today I am going to be planting seeds. Lots and lots of seeds. First thing this morning, I came in here and did my usual run through. Checked on things, watered a couple of things. We're at that uncomfortable phase in spring planting where we have some things in the greenhouse, we have some things in the great room in the house, we have some stuff in the garden, and we're constantly watching the weather. In here, I've got a 162 tray over there that's popping seedlings, and it's time to get this 1020 planted. I've been juggling paperwork and trying to figure out exactly when I should plant various things, and my conclusion was it was time to get these guys in now. This daisy ice cream container here, I mean, uh, sour cream rather, container, has fava beans in it, also called broad beans. I read up on whether people believe in soaking them overnight or not. Some people do, some people don't. My theory was I was just gonna soak them for a little bit this morning before I actually planted them, because that's not gonna hurt them. One thing I've had happen before with some beans and sea and peas and things, when you plant the, when you soak them overnight, the, the husk sort of thing comes off completely. I have always been concerned about that possibly damaging the initial set of leaves and things like that. I don't know, paranoia on my part. We're trying to do the best job we can this year, so we sort of decided to split the hair on this one. And uh, I've just had them in here soaking for probably a half hour, 45 minutes while I've been getting the, the seed tray ready to go and things like that. Now, broad beans can be planted directly into the garden. Some people do, some people don't. We tried it last year. And our conclusion was we waited a little too long last year. So we were dealing with weather that got too hot. We did not like the broad beans. We didn't like the flavor of them. And we chatted with several people. Uh, we could, we cook them different ways, we prepare, you know, we process them different ways, and we just didn't care for them. So the theory was, it was a non-traditional British flavor, a different variety, uh, grown for the US markets, and the heat may just have made them unpalatable. This year, instead of waiting until the ground is really ready, ready, ready to go to get these in, we're getting a starting in here. I see a lot of our friends in the UK transplanting their broad beans. We're gonna try it. Worst thing, we don't like it. We're trying to branch out a little bit, trying to try some other varieties of plants that might just give us something different. Uh, when I was at the grocery store yesterday, on the way back from the vet, Jack had to go see the vet because he's got a saw paw and we're still trying to figure out why. The vet couldn't figure it out either. So $65 later, we know exactly what we didn't know before, which is nothing. The only thing that, was, as my husband said, the only thing good about it is that it's obvious that there's nothing obvious. I would like to think we would have noticed something obvious, but heaven knows. Anyway, we think he's just getting a little old, might have a little arthritis in his shoulder. Uh, he was a rescue and he was abused as a puppy, so it's impossible to know uh, exactly what he went through. He did not know what a bed was when we got him, so we know he'd always been on hard ground. He was also afraid of men with shovels, so we suspect he'd been hit by them. So that being said, um, it's hard to know exactly what his issues may be. On the way back, we stopped at the grocery store. Yeah, it was an interesting experience as always, you know, mask and gloves and the whole thing. Uh, social distancing, the oh, maximum of 100 people allowed in the grocery store at any given time. All the staff were wearing masks and gloves, which is fine. I, I prefer it that way, honestly. We're almost out of carrots. We don't like to run out of carrots. I need to harvest from the garden to see what I've got in there. But just as a fallback position, I wanted a couple of pounds of carrots and there were like five or six packages. That's it. I mean, it was pretty empty in the veggie department. So that's always kind of an inspiration to get off your duff and do something about it. Now, I counted these seeds the other day for the fava beans and we have 30, six of them. So I need, let's see, one, two, three, four, five, five, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30, 35, and one more. So all I'm doing is poking holes <laughs> and because uh, they're, they're kind of big. 
the, uh, they kind of look like a lima bean, to be honest. And I figure if I poke holes like this, I've gotten a couple of spots here where there was something big and lumpy in here that, yeah. <laughs> I don't know why they consider that to be seed mix. That's more like, yeah, anyway. <laughs> that's, go that's good. So we'll get those in, and then I'm going to plant a couple of cucumber plants. Now, it's early for cucumbers, but it's not early for cucumbers in the greenhouse. And these cucumbers are specifically well-designed for the greenhouse. They are self-pollinating, and every single flower turns into a cucumber. So we've had very good luck with them before in the garden, and also pretty decent luck in the greenhouse with them. So we decided to get them going early this year and um, see what happens. It's an experiment, as always, but you know it's only three or four plants, and I have plenty of seeds. And then the rest of this tray, I'm going to fill in with kohlrabi because what I want to do is I want to get them up, you know, yay tall and transplant them out. We try to transplant out slightly larger, slightly healthier plants because our environment can be so rough. And while kohlrabi is not my favorite plant on the planet right now, in fact, I'm a little sick of it almost. <laughs> We've been kind of eating a lot of it lately. Henry loves it. He loves to eat it raw. I think it's fine raw, I prefer it in stir fry, but we've been eating both the greens and the bulbs, so it's a very efficient plant in that I can harvest, they can, har they can hold for a while. I can look at a, at, a, at a container of them and say, okay, that one's the biggest one, I think I'll harvest that one, and maybe this next one down, and leave everybody else. And they hold well in the dirt. So we're loving that because it means we're not forced instantly. I mean, there's certain things that you know you have to pick them when they're ready, otherwise they're gonna be past their best of use by date, and then they'll be tough or they'll be stringy or something else. So we're trying to take advantage of things that seem to be really cooperative, and uh, kohlrabi is definitely one of those things. Uh, we are gonna be experimenting with some new recipes. Um, I won't say they're bland, because they're not. They have sort of a cabbage flavor to them, but uh, we really do like the greens cooked in the traditional southern technique of, uh, of lots of uh, bacon and stuff like that. Anyway, on to planting. So it's fava beans first. These guys are supposed to be going in <sighs> one to two inches deep. So I'm going to put them in these one inch deep holes and then I'm going to squish them to make sure they're really down there. And some of these are, there's quite a bit, bit of variety in size. We were not able to get the variety that we wanted from our usual supplier. So to be honest, we had to sort of fish around and find somebody else who had them in stock. As you may or may not know, a lot of the seed companies are out of plants. And uh, our usual supplier, which is Johnny's, I mean, we get most of our seeds from them, uh, simply didn't have the variety we wanted. Um, in fact, I'm not even sure they had any at all in. Uh, last year we got our other variety of beans from them and didn't care for it. So we figured we'd try Windsor, which is a very traditional British variety because we didn't figure it was fair to judge <laughs> uh, without trying a traditional variety. So that's what we're doing. We're getting these guys in here. We're going to get them started. Uh, I can see that they have absorbed some moisture, so that's a good head start on them. I counted right. So we have 36 fava beans. Then we have some Tasty Jade cucumbers. It says the minimum nighttime temperature here for these things should be fairly warm, which it isn't but I can put a dome on these guys. If I was really concerned about it, I could actually, I may actually put a heat mat under these. When I went by the hydroponic store the other day to buy some perlite, because we wanted a giant bag of perlite, we didn't want some silly little thing like this. Uh, they had a bunch of the labels and I just decided that for, I don't know, three or four bucks, I was gonna get a couple hundred labels and that was gonna be good enough. So I've got the jade cucumbers in and last of all is kohlrabis. 
So every time Jack hears me say, all right, here we go. He thinks we're going back in the house. Uh, he's been wiggly today. I think he wants to be out in the yard, which I'm going to oblige him with because I really need to plant some plants out in the yard, some uh, seeds out in the yard today. Okay, these are all ready. The only thing I need to do now is top the fava beans and make sure everybody's watered well and we're good to go. Hope this inspires you to get some seeds in the ground. I've been doing a lot of homework going through the different planting times and when people recommend things to go and problems we've had in the past like with the fava beans where we they warn you that if you get them in late, um, they're susceptible to aphids, which they were. And we also had a terrible infestation of flea beetles, which is something we almost never see here. But we had everything last year. So I have my organic <laughs> bug controls ready to go. We're going to be buying nematodes to try and control our June bug larva problem. We're gonna, we're gonna fight. <laughs> And uh, so, have a great day. Be sure to like, subscribe, hit that notification bell so you can see what we're doing because there's gonna be lots and lots of different planting things. I just got my Clyde's garden planter yesterday and spent a little bit of time with it last night. It seems a little easier to use than the sheaves of paper that I've been using. Uh, I have not had a chance to compare the things they're saying with the things that say Johnny says. I expect it's probably straight on. It's just the, the, the advantage of the garden planner is that it's just, it's there. You're not scrounging through sheets of paper. But I, I want to actually watch their video and stuff like that before I make a, a final judgment call on that. But it's a new toy that I can play with. Toys are always good. <laughs> so have a great day. And we'll see you in the garden. Take care. Bye.